Hey everybody, uh, my name is Hilary Stupa and I'm a developer with Qdabra Software. Um, I did a webinar the other day on air handling in Microsoft Flow and I just wanted to do a little bit more of a step-by-step -step demo as a companion piece. Um, first I want to highlight two specific blogs. Uh, this blog post by Rob Windsor, you can see it's got a title of Microsoft Flow Air Handling, uh, has some useful tips that we'll use. And uh, this blog by Tomas, I think is how you pronounce it, um, also has some useful tips. So make sure you check out these blogs. This one's titled Try Catch Pattern, and you can see the, the blogger's name here. Um, this one's Microsoft Flow Air Handling, and you can see the blogger's name here. So both of these blog posts come in very handy uh, when you are working on um, air handling. So with no further ado, I wanted to show you how you can go ahead and add air handling to an existing flow. Now, if you're starting with a new flow, you can just look for try catch here in the templates and you'll find a great template. Um, you can use that template for your new flows where you want to add air handling. But a lot of times we think about air handling a little late in the game, right? We've got this flow running and now we've got users reporting errors or we've got something that isn't handling errors gracefully. Um, and in that case, you may wish to come add air handling to an existing flow. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about in a little more detail than I, was, than I got into in the webinar. Um, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a scope. And in my main scope, I am going to put all of these existing actions except for my variable initialization. Um, I can't at this time, I believe, put uh, variable initialization any place except at the high level. Um, so that's not to say it's going to be like that forever, but that is how it is now. We're going to verify that. Let's make sure. Nope, won't let me drag it there. So I'm going to rename this uh, main scope and I'm going to make sure that when we post this video we've got a link to my webinar so that you can associate that. Go ahead and watch the webinar first if you haven't yet um, and you need a little more background as to why I'm using scopes. Okay, I just I wanted an opportunity to get into the into the weeds a little here. So this is my main scope. I am going to put all of my stuff here in my main scope. Up it goes, up it goes, and continuing, <laughs> one more, and one more, Oop. there it is, okay, I personally, I don't know about you, I personally have had an easier time moving things when I move things up than down, so that's why I added my main scope there, all right, so now all of the main things that are happening here are happening in my, my main scope. I'm going to add a new step and I'm going to add another scope. And this is going to be my air scope. And here is my scope for my airs. I'm going to rename that, I'm going to rename that uh, air scope. Okay, so now I've got my main scope and I've got an air scope. So here is where I would put all the things that I want to have happen if something goes wrong. So perhaps I want to, uh, maybe this is something that's running when a user creates something instead of on recurrence like I've got it right now. So you may want to let the user know that there was an error and then also send a notification to IT. So, you know, your air scope, you need to put in what's appropriate to you. Um, even if right now you only have one action, I would go ahead and use a scope for it just because then that way you're ready for the future. So just in case I did that too quickly, I'm going to do that again. I clicked on the ellipsis button there and I went to configure run after, I deselected successful and I selected has failed or has timed out. There may be occasions where something timing out is not an error. Uh, in general, in my flows, I've used has failed and has timed out for my air path. And then I say done. Okay, so now I can put all my stuff that I want to have happen uh, if something fails here. And I'm just using this simple send me an email notification, but obviously you can get as complicated as you need to. Okay, and I'm going to put fail here. So, okay, this is all well and good. If my flow fails, I'm going to get an email notification that the main scope failed, and that's useful. Um, however, one thing that will happen is as long as there's no error in the air scope, the, 
flow itself is going to report success because we've handled for our error. So let's just pretend that get list items failed or populate a Microsoft Word template failed. What's going to happen is that this is going to then go to the air scope. It's going to send me an email notification and flow is going to report that this was successful which that can be kind of nice. You don't have a whole bunch of notifications piling up here telling you that your flow is failing. Um, and you'll have gotten an email letting you know that it failed, so that's helpful. But it can be tricky to go back and find the item that failed, to find the flow that failed, and it can be tricky to go and find the uh, exact action that failed. Analytics can help you with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and create with this so I can show you this great formula in here. But you can also, uh, send yourself a little bit more information. So I'm going to wait for everything to load. I'm going to hit continue. All right. There's a great formula in here. Now, I think that um, I think that this formula, right, was written by someone in the United Kingdom where the template was because you can see here in the concat https united kingdom dot flow um, what i found is i can actually use this formula directly and not have any problem it redirects to us in my environment um, or you could just get rid of the country and the dot as well so this is a simple formula you can copy right from this template that will include for you when the flow fails it will include for you a direct link back to the flow Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to steal, actually, I'm going to steal that whole thing. <laughs> Why? Why reinvent the wheel, right? I don't think that send me an email notification is actually going to send me HTML, so I'm going to delete that one and I'm just going to add uh, send mail instead. I was recently able to uh, resubscribe myself to these. I'd unsubscribed myself accidentally a long time back, and it was nice to be able to get resubscribed. Okay, so now I've got this. It'll be HTML. I'm going to send this to myself. I don't like that when it covers over like that. Okay, there I am. And I'm going to say flow failed. Okay, and so now I've got this handy formula. Like I said, if you want to be picky, um, you can go in here and you can change this expression uh, so that it has, um, I don't know why that's not showing up. Oh, because I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> you can change this expression so that it doesn't have uh, the UK in it, but uh, you can also just leave it as is. That expression isn't popping up for me anyway, which is, I'm guessing something a little buggy having to do with my having copied and pasted it. You know, nothing's perfect, right? There it is. All right. So like I said, if the country concerns you, I found that I could just take that out. Okay. So now I've got a little bit of information, right? If it fails, I'm going to be able to directly click on a link in the email and get back to the run history. Um, let's make sure it fails. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just change that and enter a custom value okay so that's not a oh <laughs> that could be a real list in my environment we'll do this one we'll do not a real list i make sure not to have a real list named that okay and so now i'm going to go ahead and hit save and i can't test this because i have to go turn it on <laughs> turn on and I'm just going to hit run here and run. Okay. So here we are. My flow succeeded. Isn't that great? And so let's click on it and see what it says here. All right. So you can see that my main scope had an error. And when my main scope had an error, it went directly to my air scope, which succeeded. And it sent me an email notification. Um, I haven't seen that yet myself. Oh, it looks like I've got, <laughs> looks like I really shouldn't have copy pasted that, but that's okay. We will go fix that up. I have forgotten that when I copied and pasted this, I didn't have this actually in uh, the right mode. Right. All right. And now we'll try that again. At any rate, you could see that it did send me an email. It did send me something with a link. And 
my uh, HTML was a little gross, but if I drag this email over here, is that nice when everything resizes nice and big like that? You can see here's my uh, link and it did shift over right there to us.flow and it does pop open the flow for me. Okay, so now I can see the flow, so that's great. So the next thing I would like to do is I would like to go ahead and I would like to, um, you know, I must not have, uh, that's really stubborn. There it is. I must not have clicked update when I changed that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get that out. If you know what your environment's going to be, there's no reason not to go ahead and fix it out. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is we can add information about what action failed. And that is, I am thinking it was this blog. Yeah, that is here in, in Rob Windsor's blog, and I've got that up on another screen. And I'm going to directly reference this while I work on this, um, just so you know that that's where that information came from. Okay, I need another variable here. So I'm gonna add an action. These other variables up here were for my original flow, okay? So I'm gonna initialize a variable, boom. And now I'm gonna follow his blog directly and I'm gonna name things the same, okay? And it just might, it makes it a little easier to copy somebody's formulas if your actions are the same name. Um, so I'm gonna call this initialize error details variable, okay? And my variable name is error details and this variable is a string, okay? Now I've got my scope named main scope, his scope is named main, but we'll, we'll, we'll roll with that, okay? So I'm gonna add an action, I'm gonna end up moving this up. We're gonna filter an array, okay? So we're gonna do filter array, filter array. Now I need this to go up above, up above here, again, the dragging makes me crazy. All right, so uh, the blogger named his filter results of main scope. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so what he does is he takes the result, what's considered the result from main scope, and then he filters it out. So the array I'm going to filter here, we're gonna use an expression, and it's gonna be result and then it's the name of your main scope mine is main scope what does flow do or power automate what does power automate do with spaces in our action names it replaces them with an underscore so if your if your main scope is my space main space scope uh, it would be the result of my underscore main underscore scope does that make sense? So we're gonna go ahead and say okay there. So there's our result. Now, over here, we're going to create an array for all of our stuff that's failed or timed out. And this is our value. And again, I'm copying this directly from his blog post. Look at that, looks like we've got some smart quotes in there. So we'll have to clean that up. That is one thing you'll run into when you're copying and pasting from somebody's blog post is a lot of times you end up with these smart quotes. So that's something to watch out for. And we'll say okay. And then he has contains and then it's item status. So what he's getting is the status of the item, any place where there was failed or timed out. And I'm gonna put that here. All right, and again, smart quotes. Now he has in this post, a, there we go, that looks right. He has um, shown us the schema of what we can expect to see back from our JSON, from our result. So you can see here's our status is failed. Um, you can see here is a status of failed. Um, so, so he's got this, this JSON schema sample for you to help you understand what you can get back. Again, I'm just copying this blog post verbatim because I found it so useful. Okay, so now that we've got this, we're going to add and apply to each. So it's our action, it's gonna be apply to each. There it is, apply to each. And we're gonna select our output. It's the body 
from filter results of main scope, easy peasy. And now inside here, we're going to append to our current air details. And that is append to a string variable. Okay, what's our string variable? It's air details, right? We created it up above. And he has a handy dandy expression here. Let me just find it. There we go. Okay. All right. And, you know, he's using some, uh, you know, some text here. So we'll, we'll just follow along. There was an issue with action. And then the action comes from the name from the apply to each result. Okay. Again, if you're if you're using the same names, you're going to have a simpler time. And again, we'll clean up the smart quotes here. Whoop! I better fix that, huh? Nobody's going to be happy if I leave that in place. Okay. Okay, and we're going to say okay, and hit enter. And still following along with this blog post, we're going to do status and. It's the same thing here. But I don't really get why that expression is so particular today. There we go. All right, I've, I've gotten a little lazy with dealing with the smart quotes. So um, I'm gonna hit escape. <laughs> Let's hit update. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, back over to expression. All right, and this one is uh, the name of the field in the JSON is status, okay? And we're gonna say update, and then we're gonna do the same thing down here for code, and that's also from the, the JSON schema of the result. And we'll do control paste, and I'm gonna do uh, code, okay? And we'll hit okay. Oh, I've got it in the wrong place. Which one is which? We'll just kill that and try again. See, we all struggle. All right, <laughs> okay, all right. So now what I'm doing is I'm appending this to each one. And then finally down here, when I go to send my email notification, right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a slightly better job on my HTML. Um, so let's just, um, and let's go over here and we'll do another paragraph. You can use the HTML builder for this. You don't have to, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to handcraft your HTML. I just started that way because I copied and pasted. So now I'm stuck, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna send this for my, for my air notification. So now my email notification yeah, okay. So I'll fix that error in just a second. Now my email notification should have my air details and the URL to the flow. Okay, template validation failed. Apply to each result referenced by inputs in append a string variable. Oh, this is because some of us copied and pasted and instead of apply to each result, mine is what? Apply to each, right? And so that's why I've got an error. So update. This is why we always read our error messages, right? I mean, if you get an error message and you read it, then you can fix it. If you just dismiss it and go, ah, oh, it's broken. That blog post doesn't work. You'll never get anywhere, right? So read the error message, fix the error. A lot of times it's something silly like that, especially when we're following somebody else's work online and we haven't named things exactly the same, which I know I just said to do. But, you know, do, do what I say, not as I do, right? All right, so I'm going to hit test again, run flow, and done, because we cannot get enough of this click and stuff. It says success, you and I, we all know it failed, right? And here we are, our email notification should be sent. I'll go check my inbox in a second. But you can see there was an issue with action get list items. The status has failed, the code is not found, okay? And then that's followed with that's followed with the link to the run, is, the run history, 
Okay, so there was an issue with action, get list items, status failed, code not found. All right, so yeah, I could do with some paragraph breaks or something in here, but regardless, this gives you a great idea of, of how you can get this information back. And I found those blogs super helpful trying to, um, trying to put some air handling in place on existing flows, um, especially when I had first just started out with this main scope and air scope. And then I went and I looked at my flows and I just saw succeeded, 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 even though I knew that I had users reporting that there had been problems. So I hope this helps you get air handling added to some of your flows and I encourage you to do that if you haven't already because you don't just want to ignore them and hope they go away. They're not going to. Have a great day.